Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. Ating balikan ang kwento kung saan isang proyekto ng Philippine Council for Health Research and Development o PCHRD sa ilalim ng Department of Science and Technology na nakatulong sa ating mga kababayang nahihirapang maglakad dahil sa paghina ng kanilang mga tuhod. Kaya tutok lang dito lang sa aming sinesyensya. I was born with in a family of seven children. My father was uh, Jose and Consuelo, were uh, farmers, sugarcane farmers, but very small. We have five hectares of land. And so we consider ourselves poor. We work in the Hacienda and the farm. Uh, I was watching carabaos and all of those. Uh, in fact, the, the uh, carabao in front of the building has a story of itself because I was watching carabaos during uh, summer or during week weekends. And at that time when I fell down from a carabao on the land and I was crying, I said, I'll never be this poor watching stupid carabaos. By the time I was seven or eight years of age, I think I always wanted to be a doctor, <laughs> even at that time. When Dr. Montoya from DOS asked me, Dr. Castillo, can we develop, can we because he knows I, I'm interested in research and development. Can we do something for Filipinos? Then the thing that comes to my mind right away is the lease system. For two reasons. One, it's very expensive in the Philippines. And we will are trying, how can we solve the problem? And second, there are not enough orthopedic surgeons in the Philippines who can do it. Half of them, I train them in the States, but in a population of 103 million, you need a lot of orthopedic surgeons to know how to do this system. Through a meeting with Dr. Ramon Gustilo, who's a world-famous orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Ramon Gustilo is a U.S.-based Filipino orthopedic surgeon who has done a lot in the area of orthopedic medicine. And one of his... Uh, Milestone achievements is actually the development of uh, implants, which are now currently patented and being used in the U.S. But this time, he wanted to develop a knee implant that is for the Filipino. And he actually approached us with this uh, concept and uh, development initiative that they, he would like to develop a knee implant for Filipinos because he knew that currently there is no available knee implant in the Philippines that was actually manufactured in the Philippines. Not to mention the exorbitant cost of having a knee implant, which cost about almost a million pesos, all in all, including the surgical fee. So when we discussed that and we saw the prospects of this 
not just being helpful to the Filipino people in terms of uh, people who would need the knee implant, but as far as his commercial viability, we decided to partner with him. And the interesting thing with this uh, partnership is that the, the government will be investing in the research and development process that will improve on this knee implant. And I, I am very proud to say that this is the first time that it happened, that the government is co-investing with a private company in the research and development field. So uh, we took a lot of risk for this particular knee implant. We had a lot of discussions before it was actually approved by the, our governing council. But more importantly, I think, it was the support of Secretary Mario Monteo which made this possible. Because if he was not enthusiastic about the whole project, this would not have been um, as fast as uh, now. So we're truly happy for his support, and he gave us the go signal. And after, what, almost two years, we're now with this knee implant that is now being produced uh, in the plant of uh, Dr. Gustilo in Cabuyao. And they're now looking at imports, in, uh, exports, sorry, exports to other countries. And to me, that is Philippine technology developed by Filipino scientists, and it's a, he has a very good uh, core of engineers uh, who is his team, support team in the development of this uh, knee implant. So he, this company is Orthopedic International and they're very competent uh, engineers and orthopedic doctors who made this possible. So we're truly proud of it. And it will really bring down the cost of uh, knee implants by 50%, 40 to 50%. So which will be of great benefit to many Filipinos who are not able to get implants because of the exorbitant cost. Do you know that there are about 70,000 patients who require knee replacement every year? 70,000. But because it's so expensive, we can only do like 1,000 a year. This is 69,000. Magtitiis na lang yun. Nag-start ang akong tuhod sakit. 1983. Diri. Sakit. Isa lang. Isa lang kalig siya. Isa lang kalig niya. Tapos so, yung... Gino, gina ko man, gina pa doktor ko man siya. Tita mga pain reliever lang na ba. Hindi naman ako bulong. Numpawan man siya. Pero hindi madala sa bulong. Nagtapok din siya di. So, yun, amat-amat siya. Amat-amat siya nga doon. Nag-amuno. Nag-deform din siya doon. Kabudlay din. Magtinda ko doon, hindi ko katay, hindi ko katindog, dali. Hindi ko kabilis, binay lang, binay na yun, ano pa, manukad pa ko, <laughs> mabuylo pa. Hindi, kabudlay gid, sa ako, hindi ka, hindi ko kagiho, kayo. Limitado gid akong giho. Kapin pa kung wag ano, nang try this. Natinda lang kayo, ang misis ko naman, uh, ano, nagatinda na. So wala pa siya na operahan, budlay gid kaayo sa iya-iya nga pang giho, hindi siya kalakat maayo. Gasakripisyo, ah, gas, gasakit ang iyang mga tuhod na eh, hindi agid makaya. Adrena, she's a late four year old. He has a problem for the last 12, 13 years. He has not been walking too much. He's primarily in the chair and stand up and walk. Uh, she has knees that are very deformed. It's not osteoarthritis. Probably she even be either gout or rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, his knees are going uh, outward. Because we use our knees for the, the whole, our whole lives, we have wear and tear of the knees. When you walk, when you and I walk, our weight is bare from the center of the hip joint, the center of the knee, and the center of the ankle. As we age, the the wear exceeds the repair of the knee. The problem with the arthritis of the knee, the wearing away, it's a permanent thing. When the cartilage disappears, no amount of medicine or injections will permanently cure him. So it's really uh, 
restructure his quality of life for the next 10 or 12 years. And she doesn't have money to be uh, done. First place, in order to answer that problem, you have to know, at least in medicine, you have to know what the problem is. Like, for instance, a broken bone now. If you break your bone, your thigh bone or leg bone, it takes four to six months to heal. Okay? How about if we develop something that we did would heal in six weeks? See, that's innovation. That changes the life of the patient. The new system that we develop is the same way. So, when I have, with Dr. Montoya and I approach, I said, we have to solve the problems of total knee replacement, alignment, and how to make it uh, affordable. Quality preserved and yet affordable. And I think we address both those problems. DOST with PCHRD will help the Dr. Gustillo, so they put in some money, Dr. Gustillo put in money, and together we built up the research, and the research became production and manufacturing. Now we're using it clinically. Axis knee is a hardware, actually it's an implant. An implant to replace damaged parts. It is designed to replace a worn out knee. This is the human knee. Knee cap. Thigh bone. Leg bone. And the knee moves like that. At the end of the bone is cartilage. This is the blue thing. The tips, oh, both of them have cartilages. Cartilage is tough. It does not have any sensation. So when we move, when we walk, it's like a good padding. As you age, this padding wears away. It becomes thin. Eventually, it disappears. When this disappears, it will be bone on bone. And when we walk on bone on bone, sa, sa Tagalog yun, nagbuto sa buto, masakit yun. That's very painful. There is no medicine that you can take to replace this. Like a broken brake pad, worn out, you cannot put oil to make it better. You have to replace it. Axis knee is a way of replacing this worn out pad. And essentially, the, the procedure cuts the, the end part of our joint that is damaged. That means the cartilage that's worn out. You cut them off and replace it with metal and plastic in a correct alignment and correct stability, what we call ligament to stability. The worn out cartilage, you just have to shape it off. Once you shape it off, the axis knee or, or implants like that, you put bone cement and you stick it in the bone. At the end, the tip or the end of this bone will have metal. The end of this bone will have, it's a special kind of uh, plastic. And together, when you move, there will not be any bone on bone contact. So the patient can walk without longevity of knee system, if properly done, it should last 25 to 30 years. Because the plastic wear, it's wear plastic, it's you only wear when sharing 0 to 2 millimeter per year, so it lasts for a long time. We calculate that the thickness of the plastic it can easily last for many years. And we have several patients, some here and some in the States, that are now 25 years because they are well aligned, they still function. To do a knee in the States, it's at least $30,000 per knee. Here, we can do it for five to 6000 easily, and that covers everything. It covers the implant, covers the 
professional who covers the hospital uh, for indigent, <laughs> but for indigent patients now. But we try to work. For really indigent patients, we just give them that. You know, I can't tell you frankly how he heard of us, but all of a sudden he just showed up on the clinic and uh, with his knees. And he's from, so I don't know how he came to us. So he's the first access knee system that we have done both knees, both knees one at a time. takot pag uh, nagkakilala ko si Dr. Destino. Dumula, miss me gamay wala ko na takot. Okay. Ang unang sabi sa akin ni ano, ni Dr. Atan nga siya lang ang doktor nga maka-refer si na. Uh, April 11, 2015. Ang uh, ubinopirahan ako ng uh, alas 6 sa aga ng sulod ko sa operating room. So gin ano ko ni Dr. Hinko, ni anesthesia. Wala mong ipatulong, ha, tama lang po. Galantaw mo lang po sa inyo ang birahan ko. Tapos nung mga... Dugay-dugay na yung opera, almost two hours to three hours. He didn't... We didn't charge him. I didn't charge him professionally. It's all free. The only thing that we charge, because the government requires it, yung implant. The implant is half the price. Yeah. He has failed health, so it it uh, it uh, pays for his uh, no, hospital bill. So after operation, then I can I can find the cause of one. So I can open the room. Gin ano na ko gin pagkaaga. Gin nag 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 nagtayo na ko. Nagamit ako na walker. Nag walker ko mga dali man lang walker. Yes, there sir, you can walk. You can stand right away. You know because we put something in there that controls the pain for the next 48 hours. But the, the amazing, the difference amazing, with the bilateral knee last week, the following day, she was already standing, and we did both things. Ang kalipay, hindi maabot sa langit nga nakabalik sa sang lakat nga insakto. Ang lang na agit akong mahambal. Buragit nga kalipay nga na insakto ang kwa ni Ronald nga abi ko ana hindi na gid na balik ang iyang paglakat. Karon okay na okay na gid na siya. Everybody has to be served. You know, irrespective whether they can afford it or you know, you just have to do it. Ang ang kalipay hindi gid maano hindi gid ma <laughs> hindi ko gid mahambal kay tungod nga why hindi na kami nag kwan hindi na siya nag problema nga kung gabi hindi na mahasol iya pagtulog insakto na iya pagtulog kag panggiho adlaw-adlaw nga pagpangita sa am panga adlaw-adlaw nga pangabuhi I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to come to an agreement with the Food and Drug Administration. That's one. For this knee implant specifically, the training program is also being accelerated uh, because of our uh, talks and seminars with a lot of orthopedic surgeons. More and more of them are actually being trained on this particular procedure and implant. So as more and more doctors are using it, more and more patients will be using it. And eventually, what we would like to happen is that uh, it will be the standard as far as knee implants are concerned in the country. So we're aiming for that. Thank you. 
naman ako may mapalit, mailisan bala ang partis ng tuhod. Hindi ka iwa ko mabalunga ng may material galing nga para pang ilit. Ang mga na lang ko sa ginuungan. Basit si Dr. Costillo ang ang tinuga ang doktor nga makabulik sa ako nga makalakat ako ng kadlong sa motor nga nagsugot ako nga magpapira sa access ni na investment. Sa, sa karon makaupran ako makapamasyar na ako sa guwa hindi na ako mahuya nga mag lakat-lakat na sa guwa kaya di tatlong na tukod ko mo na maupra ko ng tanan Ate, sa kalungit sa mahal na Diyos nga ginbuligan na ako at si Dr. Lucilo sa iya magpaninguha man nga mabuligan na ako salamat na langit kay Dr. Lucilo sa iya pag pira sa akon pag ilis ang aksis ni You take the oath of medicine, that means you might have to relieve pain and, and do all of my, my life has been medicine. Don't think about the money part. Just think that you are helping your, your patients. If you are good, money will just come to the backside of it. You know, just be a good doctor. You know, to me, that's the most rewarding part of medicine. Nagbabalik po ang DOS-TV Science for the People. Alamin ang latest update sa lagay ng panahon ngayong araw mula sa dos Pag-asa dito sa aming weather update. Magandang umaga, Miss Jen, at magandang umaga sa ating mga kababayan para naman sa ating weather update ngayong araw ng Biyernes. Tuloy na nga uh, nalusaw itong ating uh, low pressure area kahapon at sa kasalukuyan, wala naman tayong binabantay ang anong mga sama ng panahon na posibleng makapekto sa susunod na dalawang araw dito sa ating bansa. Sa kasalukuyan, ang nakakaapekto ngayon ay itong ating northeast monsoon o hanging amihan. Dito ito nakakaapekto sa Hilaga at Gitnang Luzon. Samantalang atin namang tail end ng cold front, Ito'y patuloy na nakakaapekto dito sa silangang bahagi ng Katimugang Luzon. At para sa magiging lagay ng ating panahon sa araw na to, dahil sa epekto pa rin ng ating tail and ng cold front, patuloy ngang makakaranas ng maulap na kalangitan na may kalat-kalat na mga pag-ulan at thunderstorms dito naman sa probinsya ng Quezon, gay na rin sa Bicol Region. Kaya't patuloy nating pinapaalalahanan ng ating mga kababayan sa nasabing lugar na mag-ingat pa rin sa posibleng pagkakaroon ng mga flash floods at landslides dahil ang ating thunderstorms Storms, posible pa rin itong magdala ng mahina hanggang sa katamtaman hanggang sa kumisan ay mga malalakas na mga pag-ulan. Samantala, dito naman sa probinsya ng uh, Aurora, gaya na rin sa rehiyon ng Cagayan at Cordillera uh, Administrative Region, patuloy naman makakaranas ng mga maulap na kalangitan na may kalat-kalat na pag-ulan na dulot pa rin ng ating amihan. Dito naman sa Ilocos Region at sa nalalabing bahagi ng gitnang Luzon, asahan naman natin ang bahagyang maulap na kalangitan na may pulupulong panandali ang pag-ulan. Sa Metro Manila at sa nalalabing bahagi ng Luzon, asahan naman natin ang maliwalas na panahon na may posibilidad pa rin ng mga isolated thunderstorms. Ang ating temperatura sa Baguio maglalaro simula 15 to 22 degrees Celsius. Samantala sa ibang bahagi ng Luzon, ang ating temperatura naman maglalaro simula 20 hanggang 31 degrees Celsius. Sa kabisayaan, dahil nga may epekto pa rin ang ating tail end ng cold front, magkakaroon ng mga, mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at thunderstorms dito naman sa probinsya ng Samar. Kaya ta, ingat pa rin para magkaroon tayo ng mga landslides at plus floods. Samantala sa nalalaming bahagi ng kabisayaan, asahan naman natin ang maaliwalas na panahon na may posibilidad pa rin ng pagkakaroon ng mga pulupulong pag-ulan at pagkidlat pagkulog. Ang ating temperatura naman maglalaro simula 25 hanggang 31 degrees Celsius. Sa Mindanao, asahan naman natin ang pangkalahat ng magandang panahon, sumalit asahan pa rin ang mga isolated thunderstorms. Ating temperatura naman maglalaro simula 23 hanggang 33 degrees Celsius. 
At uh, sa atin namang mga mamisidad, magamit pa rin ang malilit na sakyang pandagat. Mapanganib pa rin ang pumalaot dito sa mga sunod-sunod na baybaing dagat. Yan ay dito sa Batanes, Babuyan, Kalayan, Ilocos Norte, Ilocos Sur, Cagayan, Isabela at Aurora. Malalaki po ang alos sa nabanggit ng mga lugar. kaya pinapayuhan natin ang ating mga mamisidad na magpumalaot sa nasabing mga baybaing dagat. Silipin naman natin na magiging natin panahon sa susunod na tatlong araw. Sa Metro Manila, bukas, patuloy pa rin tayong maapektuhan ng amihan. Magkakaroon tayo ng mga pulupulong mahinang pag-ulan. Ang temperatura natin, 22 to 28 degrees. Sa susunod na dalawang araw, magkakaroon tayo ng maaliwas na panahon. Isolated thunderstorm lamang ang ating inaasahan. Ating temperatura naman, 22 hanggang 30 degrees Celsius. Dito naman sa Baguio City, bukas, magkakaroon tayo ng maulap na kalangitan na may kalat-kalat na mga pag-ulan. Ito ay eh, bunga pa rin ng ating eh, amihan. Ang temperatura, 14 to 20. Sa susunod na araw, sa Sunday, magkakaroon tayo ng maaliwalas na panahon, isolated thunderstorms. 14 to 21 ang ating temperature. At pagsapit ng lunes, huling lalamig ng bahagi ang panahon, magkakamayroon tayo ng mga pulupulong mahinang pag-ulan. Ang temperatura, 15 to 22. At dito naman sa Ligaspi City, bukas asahan pa rin ang mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at mga thunderstorms na dulot pa rin ng ating uh, tail end ng cold front. Ang temperatura, 24 to 28. Sa susunod na dalawang araw, posibleng gumanda ang ating panahon, mga isolated thunderstorm lamang. Ating temperatura naman, 24 to 31 degrees Celsius. At dito sa Metro Cebu, bukas asahan pa rin ang mga kalat-kalat na pag-ulan at thunderstorms. Temperatura, 24 to 29. Sa susunod na dalawang araw, posible namang maganda ang ating panahon, isolated thunderstorms, 24 to 30 degrees Celsius. At sa Davao City, sa susunod na tatlong araw, magkakaroon ng maaliwalas na panahon na may isolated thunderstorms. At yung temperatura, 25 to 33 degrees Celsius. At ang ating araw, sumikat kaninang 6.25 ng umaga, muli itong lulubog sa ganap na 5.52 ng hapon. At yan ang latest mula dito sa Forecasting Center ng Pag-asa DOST, ang inyong naging tagapag-ulat, Meno Mendoza. DOST TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santolon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. Saitab. The world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news, views, and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.sidev.net. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang updates sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOST-TV, the program that delivers science for the people.